Production funding for Behind the Headlines is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Mayor of Germantown, Mike Palazzola, tonight on Behind the Headlines. Eric Barnes, publisher of the Memphis Daily News. Thanks for joining us. I am joined tonight by Mayor of Germantown, Mike Palazzola. Thanks for being back. Glad to be here. Happy holidays. Absolutely. And Bill, I should say Bill Drees is on assignment. Um, I, I will start, and I'm sure many people are tuning in tonight, and we talked about it before the show, the huge uh, news this week um, with the statues coming down. Uh, I won't, that's a Memphis issue, and I won't put you in a place that, you know, to, to comment on it so much, other than I was when we were getting ready for this show, and we'll talk about the multifamily moratorium and some of the other things that we'd, we'd want to talk about and have you on. You all passed a, a resolution um, in Germantown in August, right after Charlottesville. Talk just a quick bit about that, and then we'll move on to the other. Well, issues. certainly, you know, the mayor's compact against hate and extremism uh, was something signed by uh, roughly 400 mayors around the country. It's never a bad time to stand up for what's right. And so my community, we brought forth a resolution and it passed our board of mayor and aldermen. And so we went on record uh, to make sure that people know that we're like a lot of other communities around this country and we don't stand for those type things. And, and hopefully um, more people will think that way, not only regionally, uh, but around the country. Yeah, and I will make just a comment. I'm generally, you know, I try to be as objective as possible the seven years I've done this show. I thought it was, kind of an amazing moment. I mean, yesterday in Charlottesville to that compact, they had to rename a street after Heather Heyer, the woman who was killed by a white supremacist. It was the same day that they brought those statues down. And so not exactly an objective comment on my part, but I thought it was a great day for Memphis. And we will certainly do uh, shows on that um, in the coming weeks. But let's move to Germantown. Um, and we, uh, I, I was caught, uh, I think it was a breaking news alert um, that I got on the Memphis Daily News a couple weeks ago that you had proposed a multifamily moratorium. So apartments and so on and construction in Germantown. And as someone who's lived in the Memphis area for almost 25 years now, that just seemed like that doesn't happen in Germantown, in the suburbs. The suburbs are all about growth, 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 growth. And it was a striking thing that, that you might want, that the government in Germantown might want to slow down, let alone put a temporary moratorium in place uh, on any sort of construction. So talk about why, what that means, and we'll talk about the bigger picture of where Germantown's going and so on. Well, certainly, you know, Eric, our city has always been, and, and our residents hear me say this all the time, we've always been very process-oriented, very thoughtful, very thorough, and we have not been reactionary. So I, I want to make sure that people don't misinterpret our moratorium or a request for one to be completely a reactionary stance against development. You know, what we have found in our community being landlocked and fully annexed, so we have very limited amount of open space left. And so matter of fact, in our five commercial districts, we have uh, rezoned three of those five to a mixed use priority. And so in the Forest Hill Heights area, that's near Forest Hill and Winchester, we rezoned that area that was mainly commercial to mixed use. And part of that is the premise of, let's introduce residency component to the commercial area. Uh, we would not introduce commercial component to our residential area. So we're trying to create that mixed use area. But what we found out, it's kind of like the Oklahoma land rush from many, many uh, years ago, that when you rezone an area, when there's pent up demand for class A apartments in this entire region, then the market brings you something quicker than you may anticipate. And so we kind of did the old, let's get a timeout. Let's do a little bit of a refresher on evaluating our process and understanding, you know, what absorption means for apartments in our community. You know, and that's a kind of an economic development term. I mean, you can only handle growth so quickly. For instance, in this Forest Hill Heights area I mentioned, we predicted that full absorption or build out would be in about a 25 year period with about 2,200 housing units in that area. Well, you can't bring multifamily to one area in year one, you know, four or five developments. That's not a good way to absorb in a, in a, in a planned manner. So let, let's break, mm -hmm. dissect that a little bit. Is it, is it the number and volume or is it the type of, of, of apartments that were proposed? Well, I don't think it's the type by any means. You know, we approved a development, uh, the, uh, the company's out of Indianapolis uh, called Watermark. 
It's a 310 unit multifamily. Uh, it is class A. It is not the patio apartments of the past. It is much of the mixed use variety with a lot of public space, um, a lot of communal area. I mean, the it's it, you have to uh, have an income of around seven to seventy to a hundred thousand dollars to live in one of these apartments. So it is very much high level. It's just how do you absorb that as far as bringing services to that area, police, fire, sewer, right. water pressure, <clears throat> streets, all those things. And is there any? I mean, some of this comes out of the, the what was it, Smart Code? Sure. Was the the proposal you had? And we I think we had it on the show a year ago, six months ago, talking about these changes and you know, taking certain areas of Germantown, and you can correct me where I get this wrong, and saying we want this high density versus the kind of suburban, you know, approach that Germantown and other suburbs here and elsewhere have always had, more density. Um, again, was it just an unexpected, unexpected consequences? And did you expect more housing to be proposed? Or, or, or I mean, again, that ratio of, of housing and homes, I should say, sure. versus apartments. Well, maybe it's a good to understand kind of the how our city um, is built uh, yeah. as far as residential. We're about 86 to 88 percent residential. So that is your traditional suburban bedroom community. About 12 to 14 percent is some other form of living space. Multifamily means condos, townhouses, single family attached where the houses are joined by some common wall. We have a couple of developments like that. Brownstones, multifamily apartments. So all those things, currently about 12 or 14 percent of our 15,500 households, so about 2,000 plus, are in that variety. And so, you know, we have some diversity, but it is mainly residential, the traditional format. And so we want to be able to offer everything to yeah. residents of the current, our current residents and residents of the future. And so, you know, when you prepare for, a, you know, a, again, demand, cities have zoning and they have ordinances, but cities do not uh, control the demand or the market pressure. And so when we were getting a lot of developers coming at us at one time, again, there was an important pause that needed to be taken how do we handle this? School capacity is one thing. Again, police, fire, as I mentioned earlier, all those things have to be uh, evaluated. You know, our city has not, some of our uh, communities in this uh, Mid-South area have embraced impact fees. We have not discussed that in our community. Impact fees being? Well, if a developer <laughs> comes in and produces a product, whether it's multifamily or 200 unit subdivision or maybe a new hospital, there is an impact on services in the community. They have to be paid for. They're generated by taxes of different formats, whether it's commercial, residential, property tax, because you know those are two different taxes. Residential's taxed at 25% of appraised value, commercial at 40%, and then you have sales tax. Small communities, that's really our only two revenue streams. And so you have to look, you know, you have to do the cost uh, benefit analysis, kind of that economic impact of what it's going to do to your community. You're getting tax dollars, but are you spending more on right. services? And you all, this past summer, did a tax increase, a pretty sizable sure. one. You went, you're up at what, 197? Correct. Just the Germantown rate on top of the, the Shelby County rate, or yeah, Shelby County sure. rate. I mean, does that worry you? And that gets into issues of schools, and you all are now a few years into having your own school system, sure. which we'll talk more about. But impact fees, taxes, I mean, part of the draw of the suburbs everywhere, and Germantown included, has always been, well, we're lower taxes than sure. the city we're around, in this case, in Memphis. Are you worried about that trajectory? Well, you know, it's always one of those things that's in the back of your mind, because you want to plan, again, not for today, you plan for the next 10 to 15 or 20 years. And so we've done a lot of long-term strategic planning. You know, again, taxes, uh, you always weigh, you know, it's the cost-benefit analysis. You know, people that see value in their tax dollars, they seldom complain about how high they are. They want to make sure it equates to the service level they're getting. And so our residents, you know, and I pay taxes, no one likes taxes, no one likes for taxes to go up. But again, at the end of the day, what do you get for those? In our community, I think people have found that there's been value. Every tax increase we've had over 30 years, it's produced something of great significance. This last one 
is going to produce a roughly $30 million new K-5 through elementary school. So, yeah, we always try to weigh those things, Eric, because uh, at the end of the day, you know, when we lost the hall income tax from the state of Tennessee. The hall income tax, mm -hmm. the state of Tennessee, is a, a ta it was a statewide tax on investments, hit higher income people generally. Correct. And a lot of that money was funneled into the cities, you know, proportional where those people lived. So you all, as a relatively high income um, uh, suburb, yep. had lost quite a bit. Memphis lost quite, quite a bit. And it was all part of that tax reduction that the legislature. Yeah, you're considered. exactly right. But you know, at the end of the day, we don't have that money anymore. So yeah. where do we go to find it? We either cut services or we ask our residents for more or we diversify right. a certain a bit. You know, and part of the plan in Germantown, and it's not this mayor's plan, it started back in 2004 with our long-term vision plan known as Germantown Vision 2020. And then we adopted a new strategic plan in 2015 called Germantown Forward 2030. That should take us to the year 2030 and hopefully another 10 or 15 years beyond that. But in both those strategic plans, smart code or mixed use uh, was embraced by our residents and our citizenry. And again, as I mentioned, you know, just a few moments ago, we're trying to make sure we maximize our land in our city. And so how do you introduce the residential component to the commercial area? And that's been uh, kind of a challenge. We've got a mixed use plan that's going on right now called Thornwood. It's been so far very successful on the residential side, but not complete on the mixed use side yet. Yeah. Um, a whole bunch of things that we'll come back to in that, but you mentioned the school. Let's go back to that. You all, the, the tax increase, as you said, was in part to, to or maybe entirely, to, to build a K through five school. That was in response to not having control of, I mean, this is a question, the th what they call what, the yep. three Gs, mm -hmm. German, sure. the, the schools, Germantown Elementary, Middle School, and High School that the Shelby County School System held on to sure. um, as part of consolidation, deconsolidation. Um, you all are building your own K through five school for your school system. Have you given up on getting control of those three Germantown based Shelby County schools? Sure. Well, we've got a great relationship with the three principals that are there and we treat those schools as if they're a part of our community because they are part of our community. They are embedded in our community and before merger, demerger, those eight public schools, they were figuratively ours to begin with. We owned them emotionally. Uh, we did not own them financially, um, yeah. and so now we have our own district, and we have three. Uh, we will always have conversations with uh, our peers over at Shelby County Schools. Uh, if we see more growth in the future, you know, do we put a wing at one of our elementaries or middles? Do we put a wing at this new school? Do we go back, you know, and if it's a few years, do we go back to the same leadership at SCS, or perhaps it's new leadership there, and make an offer to purchase again? You know, our growth has been driven, and I think I've shared this with you before on this show, you know, our single greatest economic catalyst has been controlling our own school district. We are seeing people move into our community at such a rapid pace that we're having to build an elementary school. And again, yeah. this is part of this moratorium because we need to take stock of our growth. And yeah. you know, it's, it's great for people to flock to your community and be considered a one of a community of choice around this region but you also have to prepare for it. Yeah, and we've had other mayors on with, that have seen this growth and the attraction of the schools and they're putting kids into portables and into, I mean, they're, they're, they're kind of bursting at the seams and no one wants that. That's not what someone moved to their community for. Back to the, the, the conversations, I mean, what, you had conversations with Shelby County School System about buying the schools. Did it just, you guys couldn't agree on price or was it more complicated than that? Was it a control issue on their hand? Well, sure, well, well, you know. Well, why did those conversations end? Yeah, and I, you know, I can't answer questions on behalf of the other party that we spoke uh, to. Uh, but you know, we made a uh, offer. We thought it was a very fair offer, uh, very viable, uh, a very substantial offer, twenty-five million dollars. And there was dialogue and discussion. I think uh, at the end of the day, Shelby County Schools they were looking to if we sell a building, we need to replace a building. And so I think they were really having to jockey with those decisions. Um, and you know, it, it, at the end of the day, it's business. It's not personal. Um, some people take it personally, um, but you know, we will continue to have you know conversations with them okay. in the future. And you know, one of the things I will say about SCS is that they have made a commitment to the schools in our city, Germantown Elementary, Middle, and High School, and we're very excited about that. We have, I have a family in my city 
that uh, has a child at Germantown High School that because they have an international baccalaureate program. They have a child at Houston High because there's an honors academy there and they have a child who's homeschooled. So they have really taken this cornucopia of educational choices yeah. and they did their own due diligence and they got made a family decision and the family made three different educational decisions. To me, that's a cool community to live in. You got choice. And this, the new school, just to wrap that, is a K through five school. Mm -hmm. How many students, give or take? Well, I think it's going to be built for a capacity of close to 700. Um, you know, and it will uh, hopefully it is right now. It's going through its uh, regulatory approvals. Even though it's our school, they still have to get planning commission yeah. approval, design review commission approval. We hope to break ground sometime in the late spring, and it would be open for the fall of 2019. And I think I've heard dialogue at our school board. Because, you know, they're going to have to rezone, and that's always a very delicate oh, issue. Where, where, where neighbors go, we've always, yes. our younger children went here, but now they're zoned for this. I got you. Yeah, and I think they're going to be very, very sensitive to, you know, if a, if a child is started at uh, Farmington, and they started in K, and they're now in third grade, they'll probably finish there, opposed yeah. to being uprooted to go to the new shiny new school with all the, the right. greatest amenities. Uh, but they're going to, our, our district, the, the cool thing about having your own district, it's small and it's nimble, and those leaders can make decisions that are impactful for their parents. Uh, talking about development, in, in Memphis, uh, the, the Strickland administration made some news, <clears throat> excuse me, this past summer uh, when they announced that they were going to stop doing sewers and into unincorporated Memphis. How, I don't know this, how does Germantown do its sewer system? Well, that caught a lot of people off guard and, uh, you know, a lot of conversations with Mayor Jim and with his leaders. Um, a lot of the people in the commercial development community were burning up my phone because they had projects in Germantown and... and that tied that, into the Memphis... And well, in, Memphis yeah, sewer well, in a second, I'll I kind of explain, okay, okay, but, yeah, but you ahead. know, there was a lot of anxiety. And so in Germantown, as you asked, we have uh, what's called an evergreen uh, contract with the city of Memphis. Okay. And that we have, we did uh, years ago, our city made a decision many, many years ago, uh, 30 to 40 years ago, not to uh, treat its own wastewater. And so... We are a client of the city of Memphis, in essence. So we are their customer, and we have a contract. It adjusts every couple of years on a volumetric basis, and it is evergreen. Um, we feel very comfortable with that. Uh, the mayor because they have not put that on the table that they would end those contracts. What they what they have said, if I if I read sure. this correctly, they want to end any new connections. Yes. They want to. They don't want to continue. In part, it's a philosophy of we don't want to continue to fuel growth outside of the city. I sure. mean, why would we do that? We're, they're focused, the city of Memphis is focused on density and a lot of the same issues sure. you're talking about, bigger scale, bigger city. Um, but you haven't had any indication that they are wanting to end the contract with you. No, and, and we feel very firm and, and very comfortable that uh, they'll honor that. Uh, we don't feel yeah. threatened. Uh, we have a contract um, and we, you know, we have to prepare our infrastructure to take that wastewater to the Memphis uh, outfalls and that type thing. And that's our responsibility, but treating it as theirs. And again, it is a customer relationship. So we are their customer. We think that hopefully they're making some type of a small profit off of us and that, you know, we don't have any heavy industrial waste. So we don't have manufacturing. So what we bring is less uh, that has to be treated. And right. so I, we feel like we're a good customer for yeah, them. So. Right. I mean, these are huge issues. So some people can listen and say, why is Eric talking about sewer so much? Well, no, no, it's but significant. They are huge. They are significant issues. And, you know, you go back to the growth of the city of Memphis and the suburbs and just the, 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 the mapping out of the sewer system. Some would say that is what fueled so much growth out of the urban core and that Memphis sort of shot itself in the foot by enabling well, that simply through sewers and infrastructure. Well, and it kind of, this um, segues a little bit uh, toward back to the apartment moratorium. Yeah. Um, there is an analogy there. You know, I think the city of Memphis uh, annexed uh, without the thought of what it will cost later on. And so we're in the same position if we grow too quickly with multifamily and certain density in areas, then we can't just grow for the sake of growth. We have to grow right. for the sake of what is it going to produce in revenue and how that we handle that vis-a-vis -vis services. Um, and you know, I will tell you this, um, the, on, the, uh, on the wastewater, um, there was a lot of anxiety there, but the cooler heads at the end of the day really prevailed. And, 
and we agree with Mayor Strickland in the sense that you know they want to take care of their municipal boundaries. But it's some, it goes back a little further than that. And in the 70s, and I wasn't around in leadership then, but you know a lot of the suburbs uh, decided to give certain federal money directed by the EPA to the city of Memphis to handle a lot of exterior sewer services. So this goes back to almost two generations ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned Germantown 2030, and before that was Germantown 2020, the, the master sure. plan for um, the, the, the city of Germantown. Memphis is it, um, and we've done a number of shows on Memphis 3.0, and, and people kind of don't know what it yeah. is to some degree. I mean, we've tried to write about it. Um, some people view, when, we, when we've talked about it, when we've done shows about Memphis 3.0, they've said, well, you know, that's just this kind of, you know, thing that people do, and then they put it on a shelf. Sure. What, what is your experience, because you were an alderman before sure. mayor, with this master plan? Was it, was it a meaningful guide, or was it something that you just sort of checked box and wrote a check to a consultant, and yeah. no one really followed it, but everyone kind of talked about it? Well, we've done uh, comprehensive master planning three different times in a 20-year period, 95, 05, and 15. We use consultants for the first two. Our city administrator's been with us 29 plus years, and so part of my challenge to him was, you've been around long enough, let's not pay somebody. Can you handle this year-long process with staff? And so we did get uh, Rebecca Ryan, who's a futurist, to come and kick us off, and, and we had a few other uh, studies that were done, but by and large, we didn't spend seventy-five hundred thousand dollars on a consultant because we've done this before. Uh, we spent a year working on this. Nine task force were set. Um, they did a lot of work. About a thousand of our forty thousand residents touched this document in some form, and yet we actually implemented every uh, board of mayor and alderman meeting. Any agenda item that comes for forward. My staff, when they make their presentation, has to demonstrate how it ties back to Germantown Forward 2030. Every two years, we take the plan off the shelf, dust it off figuratively, and see how we need to augment it or change it or to test whether it's still relevant. We have a quarterly dashboard uh, metrics that are on our website where we measure these different areas, whether it be land use, transportation, economic development, public safety, uh, lifelong learning, all those different components, we study those. And I will say this, I am very um, pleased to see that the city of Memphis is embarking. I don't think they've done a com comprehensive master yeah. plan since like maybe 81 yeah, or two. Right. And I have gone to some of their meetings, uh, the ones that are close they have in Cordova, uh, so it's not as far of a drive. I've sat in on them. I'm kind of a, a strategic planning geek. And so I go to these meetings just to listen and um, well, they're really and, doing a good job. And we've talked about this before, but it is interesting that, you know, this, again, in the 20 something years I've been in Memphis, there is this different tone now of that you and, and others in the suburbs have brought forward of, of collaboration with the city, you know, so suburbs, you know, there was a time when Germantown and Collierville and other places were built on this premise of not being Memphis. Now, I mean, you, as you've said before, mm -hmm. you work in Memphis, you sure. work at Roads, and mm -hmm. it's a, the mayor's is a part-time job yeah. for you. Um, so, and you're in part of, we've talked before, I think, at Region Smart, this mm -hmm. group of all these mayors, county mayors, 20-some mayors in the whole region that you, that you all uh, collaborate on ideas and share ideas. Um, talk about, I mean, the importance of Memphis. I mean, sure. the importance, can you all thrive if Memphis doesn't? No, without, I mean, without a doubt, you know, regionalism is something that needs to be embraced right now. And I've said this maybe on this show, I know I did it at the summit last year, you know, it's very, you can be a, a resident of a region and a citizen of a city. And those two things can work in harmony together. And they should, there should be some balance with what happens in Memphis um, is going to impact the entire region. You know, we have a gubernatorial race going on right now. And we have a lot of those folks that are spending a lot of time here in Memphis. They understand the importance of this area. But regionally, we do have to work together. Um, and you know, your paper is one of the sponsors for the Region Smart Summit. It's something I look forward to. Um, this will be the third one coming up because we have that opportunity to collaborate and combine some of, the, of our thoughts. Um, you know, I will tell you this right now, there has not been a better time in this region for all the municipal mayors and leaders, uh, we are working together more than I've seen. I've been involved in some form of service for about 20 years in this region, and this is really a good time. And it's uh, one of those things that we should be proud of to be progressive. Uh, we work with the Memphis Regional Chamber very well. Uh, the suburban chambers have a suburban alliance 
we come together a lot. So it's been it's been something that's been refreshing. Well, uh, one of those areas where you came together, I believe, is on <clears throat> the pitch for Amazon oh my gosh, HQ2. Yeah. So, you know, Memphis puts forward a proposal, but that proposal incorporated amenities of Germantown. Am I right about that? Well, I mean, the, we had a, you know, we had a large meeting with yeah. all the municipal mayors, uh, all eight mayors in this region, the, the, the seven municipals and the one county mayor, all the economic development drivers, the edge, the suburban chambers and the, and the Memphis regional chamber. And our approach was, let's not just say it needs to be figuratively on one of the bluffs, the, the headquarters. Maybe there's an area between Collierville and Germantown. Maybe there's an area in Bartlett. So we all put forth areas in our community that could fit this footprint of a headquarters. And so we all worked collaboratively. The, right before we put the uh, application in the mail, I think one uh, Phil Trinary, the president and CEO of the Memphis Regional Chamber and his lieutenants made a great comment. They, we basically spent what would take about two years and hundreds of thousands of dollars to put together the Memphis Region Fact Book. We did it in about six weeks. I mean, and, and you know, fact books are what um, site locators use when they are bringing a business to this region. And they want to have everything outlined, and whether it's Germantown or Memphis or even Fayette County or North Mississippi at times. It's one of those rare times where, you know, if Amazon comes here, that's a boom for counties, all nine counties in this MSA. Yeah. Well, we, we will leave it there. Um, I could ask you more questions, but we, we've run out of time. And I will say, if you joined us late, uh, you know, the, the big news of the week, and, and I'm not, and you and I talked about this before, I'm not taking away from your being here, because we always love to have you here. Uh, the statue's coming down. We'll talk about that um, in the coming weeks. Um, clearly a big story. Um, we'll have Bill here and some other historical context on that. For now, thank you for joining us. Join us again next week. show, I thought it was kind of an amazing moment. I mean, yesterday in Charlottesville, to that compact, they had to rename a street after Heather Heyer, the woman who was killed by a white supremacist. It was the same day that they brought those statues down. And so not exactly an objective comment on my part, but I thought it was a great day for Memphis. And we will certainly do uh, shows on that um, in the coming weeks. But let's move to Germantown. Um, and we, uh, I, I was caught, uh, I think it was a breaking news alert um, that I got on the Memphis Daily News a couple weeks ago that you had proposed a multifamily moratorium. So apartments and so on and construction in Germantown. And as someone who's lived in the Memphis area for almost 25 years now, that just seemed like that doesn't happen in Germantown, in the suburbs. The suburbs are all about growth, 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 growth. And it was a striking thing that, that you might want, that the government in Germantown might want to slow down, let alone put a temporary more issue. And I won't put you in a place that, you know, to, to comment on it so much, other than I was when we were getting ready for this show. And we'll talk about the multifamily moratorium and some of the other things that we'd, we'd want to talk about and have you on. You all passed a, a resolution um, in Germantown in August, right after Charlottesville. Talk just a quick bit about that, and then we'll move on to the other. Well, issues. certainly, you know, the mayor's compact against hate and extremism uh, was something signed by uh, roughly 400 mayors around the country. It's never a bad time to stand up for what's right. And so my community, we brought forth a resolution, and it passed our board of mayor and aldermen. And so we went on record uh, to make sure that people know that we're like a lot of other communities around this country, and we don't stand for those type things. And, and hopefully um, more people will think that way, not only regionally, uh, but around the country. Yeah. And I will make just a comment. I'm generally, you know, I try to be as objective as possible the seven years I've done. Production funding for Behind the Headlines is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Mayor of Germantown, Mike Palazzola, tonight on Behind the Headlines. I'm Eric Barnes, publisher of the Memphis Daily News. Thanks for joining us. I am joined tonight by Mayor of Germantown, Mike Palazzola. Thanks for being back. 
Glad to be here. Happy holidays. Absolutely. And Bill, I should say Bill Drees is on assignment. Um, I, I will start, and I'm sure many people are tuning in tonight, and we talked about it before the show, the huge uh, news this week um, with the statues coming down. Uh, I won't, that's a Memphis residency component to the commercial area. Uh, we would not introduce commercial component to our residential area. So we're trying to create that mixed use area. But what we found out, it's kind of like the Oklahoma land rush from many, many uh, years ago that when you rezone an area, when there's pent up demand for class A apartments in this entire region, then the market brings you something quicker than you may anticipate. And so we kind of did the old, let's get a timeout. Let's do a little bit of a refresher on evaluating our process and understanding you know, what absorption means for apartments in our community. You know, and that's a kind of an economic development term. I mean, you can only handle growth so quickly. For instance, in this Forest Hill Heights area I mentioned, we predicted that full absorption or build out would be in about a 25 year period with about 2,200 housing units in that area. Torm in place uh, on any sort of construction. So talk about why, what that means, and we'll talk about the bigger picture of where Germantown's going and so on. Well, certainly, you know, Eric, our city has always been, and, and our residents hear me say this all the time, we've always been very process-oriented, very thoughtful, very thorough, and we have not been reactionary. So I, I wanna make sure that people don't misinterpret our moratorium or our request for one to be completely a reactionary stance against development. You know, what we have found in our community being landlocked and fully annexed, so we have very limited amount of open space left. And so matter of fact, in our five commercial districts, we have uh, rezoned three of those five to a mixed use priority. And so in the Forest Hill Heights area, that's near Forest Hill and Winchester, we rezoned that area that was mainly commercial to mixed use. And part of that is the premise of, let's introduce 